So recently, I've noticed that the average death level has been increasing dramatically across all classes, at least on the Horde side. And as a result, I've started to think that a lot of you might actually be starting to close in on a level where you're going to need to start thinking about getting a mount. Now, having recently hit level 40 on my warrior, I know a little bit about going about getting the gold to be able to get your mount. So I thought I'd bring out this video with a hope to helping you all be able to get your mount at 40 as I'm sure you all desire to do so. So let's dive into it. And before we do, the first thing I want to say is this is not simply going to be about grinding. You all know that grinding is what's going to make you the money. We've already had a whole video, our last video, talking about the value in grinding. But this is actually going to be a little bit more expansive than that because while I am going to suggest that you grind to get the gold for your mount, this is firstly going to be about how to pick the right grind for you because your class, your level, your professions can all dictate a massive amount what is actually going to be the best way of grinding in order to get you this money. But also then about extrapolating value, how you can get additional value out of the grind that you would otherwise be doing in order to make a little bit of extra money along the way, or in some cases, quite a lot of extra money. But first, we'll talk about how to pick the right grind for you. Now, the first thing that I do when I'm making my decisions on the right grind for me, is I look at the level and the class of the character I'm looking to do the grind on. Now, this is because if you are, like say, in my example, a warrior, you don't want to have to be doing a grind where the mobs are going to be so difficult to kill that I'm stopping to eat or recover health between every mob. It's going to slow me down dramatically, as well as eat into my profits, because whether it be my gold that I spent to gain more food or my time to go fish it up, it's going to greatly decrease my gold per hour in terms of trying to get towards my mount. So if you're playing a class like a warrior or something like that that doesn't have a particularly great time grinding mobs when they are difficult because you're going to have a lot of recovery time, then you are going to want to consider getting it to a grind spot where the mobs are going to be green to you. Similarly, if you're playing an excellent grinding class that doesn't really care as much about the levels, like a hunter, you can maybe push up a little bit higher, do something that is going to be slightly higher level than you are so that you can get additional value out of, say, the grey items that drop because they'll be a higher vendor value because they are a higher level. Next up, you are going to want to consider the class that you're playing. Now, this is primarily because certain classes have a better time against certain types of mobs than others. For example, on my warrior, I find that I do particularly well against caster mobs, and I also find that I do particularly well in an area where mobs are close enough together that I'm able to basically charge from one mob to another, but not so close that I risk pulling more than one mob at a time because that can be a real issue for the warrior. If you are, say, playing a mage, you're going to want to obviously pick an AoE farm that you can just, like, murder all of the mobs, take them all down very quickly, and then recover and go again. If you're playing as a hunter, maybe you're going to be better off suited to a location where some of the mobs are quite difficult to get to, and you can just shoot them down and bring them to you with your pet. Or maybe the mobs are just hitting particularly hard, so having a pet tank is going to be a better option for you, and by going to this farm, you're going to be able to see off the competition because they're going to want an easier one. There is always a better option. I'm not going to go through every single farm in the game here because obviously there are so many ways that you can farm this gold out. It would The exhaustive list would be hours and hours long and that's just not something that anybody wants. So helping you guys to figure out what is the best way to pick a farm is going to be the much better option. With all that being said, I will tell you the two farms that I used when I was approaching level 40 in order to be able to get my mount money completed. Now it is worth mentioning that I had thought about saving up my money very early, which is something I highly recommend that you all do as well. Certainly by the time you reach level 30, you're going to want to have it in the back of your mind that you're not going to want to spend your money and you might want to do some ways of leveling that are going to get you a little bit of extra cash along the way because you can start building it up quite a lot quite early. So do bear that in mind. By the time I got to about the 38 mark where Mount was at the forefront of my mind, I was already at about 50, 60 gold which is obviously the vast majority of the way to my mount. But when I decided that I wanted to finish it off while doing my leveling, I picked on two particular farms. The first one is going to be killing the trolls in the very northwest of Stranglethorn along the beach where a lot of you go when you're doing like your headhunter quest and things like that. I find these mobs quite easy to kill and they were also going to be dropping me cloth, which was a, one of the ways that I had available to me for making a great deal of money. More on that in a minute when we start talking about extracting extra profits. I also had access to the beach here, which is where I did the majority of my troll killing, 
because there was going to be fishing nodes available to me. Again, we'll talk a little bit more along that when we get to our extrapolating value in just a moment. The other farm that I did was in the northeastern coast of Tanaris, where we all go for killing our turtles. Now, this one may seem like an odd one, and I'll explain a little bit more in a little minute, but basically we picked this farm because of the amazing fishing that is available in this location. There is generally a school of fish like every few yards, and there's lots of floating wreckages, and the only mobs here are turtles, which are neutral, so you don't actually have to kill anything at all while you're farming your gold if you don't want to. Now, with all that being said, I picked these two farms because I had a lot of way of making money out of them, mainly through extrapolating value. So the first thing we're going to talk about is we'll talk about the troll farm. Now, the troll farm had the uh, capacity to get me a lot of good vendor grays and a lot of green hills of stranglethorn, which actually sell for like two silver a time, which given I'd completed the quest already meant that I was actually able to vendor all of these and make a decent profit off of it. However, I extrapolated extra value with both my professions, which is something that's not uncommon to most, but what people often miss is that you can make a lot of money out of secondary professions as well, so we're going to have a quick talk about that. Now, first up, we're going to talk about fishing, because I've already mentioned it, and it's also the one that most people already know about, so it won't spend too long on this. But by fishing, particularly on the warrior, I was able to acquire a lot of fish that I was able to then cook and use as food for myself, saving myself the gold. But what I was really after was the treasure chests that you can pick up, the bound chests, the bound trunks, I forget what they're called, along the way while you are getting these fish from schools. Now, these often contain bolts of cloth, or they can contain green items, or they can contain potions, all sorts of things that you can vendor and make an awful lot of money. By the time you're reaching this level, if you're in Stranglethorn, you'll find that most of the green items that you get are probably going to be worth in the high double digits of silver bordering onto one gold. And when it came to the turtle farm, if you were able to get greens there and bolts of cloth there, you could get upwards of two gold in a single chest, which is absolutely fantastic. Not to mention that, of course, you could be picking up items to improve your gear along the way as well. But what people don't realise is that you can actually make money with both of the other secondary professions as well. Now, there's no lemon meringue pie recipe in WoW, unfortunately, but that doesn't mean that we can't cook up something tasty. While I was doing my leveling, before I started doing this farming, I went and completed the quest to kill all of the raptors just south of the whole town in Stranglethorn, and I found myself having a lot of raptor flesh. Now, raptor flesh in of itself is something that I can vendor, but at about one silver a pop, it's not really all that helpful. However, if I were to cook it all, using only 10 copper per flesh to increase the capacity of my vendor value by cooking it, I was then able to sell these when they were cooked roast raptor, for about three silver a time, meaning that I had made my profit increase by 200%. Now that is of course something that is going to make you get to your mount an awful lot quicker. On a similar note, when I mentioned that I was killing the trolls because I wanted the silk cloth that comes from them, my professions and secondary professions actually allowed me to have multiple ways of making a large amount of gold from the silk cloth. Firstly, since we're talking about secondary professions, we were able to convert all of this silk cloth into heavy silk bandages, which well over doubles their vendor value when they're then sold as well. And I think I actually made about 10 to 15 gold just from vendoring bandages, which is absolutely fantastic. And we aren't limited to our secondary professions when it comes to extrapolating extra value as well. While a little bit more obvious, your primary professions can be used to extrapolate value also. In my case, on this character, I had mining and engineering. Now, the locations that I picked are actually very subpar for using my mining in order to be able to make extra money. However, along the way, I had found myself getting ahead of the game with my mining, and as such, I had hundreds of iron ore sat in my bank already that I'd just gotten naturally while leveling. And given that I'd already got past the point where I was using iron with my engineering, it meant that I didn't have to worry about using this for anything other than making money. Now, I noticed that the vendor value that I could get for vendoring iron grenades was absolutely huge. And given that you craft two to four of them per time, I was actually going to be profitable even if I only got two on each single occasion. And anything the more that I got from there was just going to make my mount come that little bit quicker. And the only thing that I didn't have hundreds of in reserve already was the silk cloth. So that was why I was going after these as well. Of course, once I had acquired so much silk cloth that I was able to craft all the iron grenades and sell them, I continued to make the bandages. Now, 
like I said, this didn't get me much out of mining in the farms I was doing. However, if you were to have any other professions, there is almost always something that you can craft that is going to be able to vendor for a considerably large amount of money comparative to the value of the materials. Now, I'm not going to go and make an exhaustive list again from everything in every profession, because like I said, that would take an absolutely mountain of time and make this video so long. And it's also kind of irrelevant because the better way to do this is to figure out what you've got in terms of materials already and to also figure out what you've got access to acquiring through farming at your appropriate level and class. Now, if you find that you have tailoring, for example, you could go as simple as just turning cloth into bolts and vendoring the bolts or making a craft appropriate to the cloth that you are doing and then vendoring that. If you have blacksmithing, you can certainly make sharpening stones and things like that. They're not going to be particularly valuable, but I'm sure there's something along the way that you can craft there. Uh, leatherworking, I know that a hillman's shoulders are on the, has a particularly good value that you can vendor for. And obviously you are going to find yourself with a, a massive abundance of leather along the way as well. And then even moving on to the gathering professions, of course, you know that you can turn those and just vendor them in. Or if you have the accompanying crafting profession, which I'm sure you all do, you'll be able to craft something there, even if it is as minimal of a profit margin as most of the potions in alchemy tend to be. The only one without a particularly good way of doing this is enchanting, but most people don't level enchanting during the hardcore challenge anyway. And there is still things like the wands that you can do this with. And that is where you're going to want to look in order to be able to make your mount money. Now, I appreciate that this video has been quite conceptual as opposed to giving you examples other than the ones that I did myself. But that is, of course, like we've mentioned, because the different classes and levels that you're going to be attempting these things at are obviously going to make a considerable difference in terms of how good of a farm it is for you, as well as factors like whether you're able to play off-peak or if you have to play exclusively at peak, whether your gear is ahead of the game or if you're lagging behind a little bit. There's all sorts of things to consider when it comes to what farms are capable to be done by yourself. But all I can really say as closing thoughts is that I really recommend that you start the grind as early as possible when it comes to your mount. If you're going to start at 39, you're not getting your mount at 40. And if you are someone who's kept ahead with their professions and their secondary professions, these are absolutely going to be your best friend when it comes to making the money for your mount. With all that being said, guys, I think that that's going to about do it for this video. If you don't like the fact that this is conceptual as opposed to examples, then feel free to start a discussion down below. I do read all the comments, and if you happen to be someone who is playing a class and level that I know of a good farm that I can help you advise to get your money for your mount, then I will let you know down below as well, so do bear that in mind. But for now, guys, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one. Laters.